Bonjour. Mesdames, Messieurs, chers collègues, bienvenue à la première session du Comité militaire des chefs d'État major de la Défense de 2021. C'est un plaisir de voir des collègues assis autour de la table avec moi, ainsi que ceux qui y assistent virtuellement. Je tiens à remercier la Belgique pour tout son soutien supplémentaire tout à, au long de la pandémie et en ces temps difficiles. Alors que nous continuons à faire face à cette crise, le gouvernement et l'armée belge ont permis à notre organisation internationale de continuer à faire son travail ascension. Merci, Michel. Merci à votre gouvernement. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, welcome to the first session. It's a pleasure to see you all here. And NATO has continued to operate during the pandemic and these challenging times. The Chiefs of Defence today will provide strategic advice and guidance to enable the decision making of our lead political leadership. The Military Committee commitment to its mission and the advice it provides the North Atlantic Council is steady and steadfast. I'm very grateful the Secretary General, Jens Stoltenberg, has found time to meet with us this morning to offer his guidance, to discuss progress on NATO 2030 and provide views on the forthcoming Defence Ministers' meeting. All around the Alliance, on duty, away from family and friends, in difficult, arduous conditions, our forces, Allied forces, play a vital role in keeping one billion people of our combined populations and territory protected and secure. I invite all of you to stand with me now as we pay a moment to pay our respects and remember the sacrifice of the men and women wounded or killed in the line of duty. Thank you. Last year and today, we see governments around the world adapting to counter and halt the spread of coronavirus. There is cause for hope as the number of affecting vaccines grows, but the fight is not over. We must not let our guard down now. All of us have been affected by this pandemic and we struggle with the societal and economic repercussions. However, we also see strength and resilience in our societies reaching out across communities supporting each other at this time of need. Resilience is an issue for us as military leaders and we should think and discuss how it can be strengthened. As we endure and adapt, ready to bounce back from whatever happens next. And our security and prosperity depends on a resilient society. We work together with our allies and partners, following shared values and understanding we are stronger together. General Todd Walters, to my left, our Supreme Allied Commander of Europe, is leading the military coordination of NATO's response to the pandemic. And we're receiving many requests every day through our Euro-Atlantic Disaster Response Coordination Centre. General Walters Sacker has implemented new procedures to speed up air transport in coordination with Eurocontrol, who agreed a new dedicated call sign for military relief flights. We're very grateful to our forces, particularly our military medical teams, who from the very beginning have assisted both national and international partners and friends and allies wherever and whenever possible. From supporting civilian hospitals and using military hospitals, creating support to infrastructure, to building field hospitals, as well as the military flights, transporting vital equipment, ventilators, oxygen, vaccines, as well as essential goods across the Alliance and beyond. We've created a trust fund and a stockpile of medical supplies and equipment through our procurement and support organization. And we're reviewing lessons for the future so we can offer the best support to nations, allies and friends. Importantly for this committee and this group of leaders, our operations, missions and activities continue. We have robust procedures in place to protect our people with our military medical teams playing a key role. On land, in sea, at sea, in space, online, on cyber, our troops stand shoulder to shoulder and continue to protect each other and keep our nation safe. And I've seen that despite the restrictions 
on our visits. Interoperability stems not only from operations, but also exercises and training, which support NATO efforts to build readiness within the Alliance, deter potential adversaries under the exercise program led by SACUR. This enables us to work with civilian organizations to work in theaters of operations and elsewhere to test capabilities and practice working together in crisis. And we'll hear more about that from Allied Command Transformation Commander General Lanata later. NATO-led forces must be able to work together. Despite differences in doctrine, language, structures, we work together and we are interoperable. This is important because the security environment remains contested and only by working together can we deal with these challenges. Each nation, each of you, bring different experience and expertise. And I've seen throughout my tenure the immense benefit of working together. And we invest in partner security across the alliance, as we'll witness this afternoon with our partners. But as a regional alliance, we pay respect for our geography, but we face global challenges. And you'll hear more about that in a moment from the Secretary General. And we, as an alliance, are determined to protect and defend our security, our freedom, and our common values, which include individual liberty, human rights, democracy, and rule of law. We've been present in Afghanistan for almost two decades. Our forces are there in the NATO-led Resolute Support Mission to train, advise, and assist the Afghan National Security Defense Forces and the Afghan government. I know from my own visits as the Sakur and the Secretary General, the Afghan people want and deserve peace. NATO fully supports the US-led process. We continue to assess our presence based on conditions on the ground. And we do so together in a coordinated and deliberate way. In Iraq, the Alliance continues to play a key role in the fight against international terrorism with our training mission. And we're assisting the Iraqi government and the Iraqi security forces in building a sustainable, transparent, inclusive, and effective security inf institution and armed force. They are then better able to fight terrorism, prevent the return of Daesh, and stabilize their country. A lesson from all of our missions is the sooner we build local capacity, train local forces, and build local security institutions, the better for everyone. Training local forces is one of the best defensive weapons we have. And peace and stability in Europe is crucial to NATO's core mission. And the security of the Western Balkans is part of Euro-Atlantic stability. Our offices in Sarajevo, Belgrade, and Skopje promote political dialogue and carry out practical cooperation. We are fully committed to Kosovo security. Our Kosovo mission continues to provide a safe and secure environment, freedom of movement for all communities, in line with the UN mandate. Today, we will devote time to discuss the plans and policies to, to sharpen our military edge for the future. Two years ago, we adopted the NATO military strategy, which sets out our military priorities and approach to current and future threats. It's a guide. Whatever is required to achieve and maintain our security within the resources available. Building on that military strategy, General Todd Walters, Supreme Allied Commander, and his team have developed a concept that focuses on deterrence and defense of the Euro-Atlantic area. It covers the immediate and short-term response to identified threats based on existing capabilities, people, and technology. And, crucially, provides a clear link between the NATO military strategy whilst underpinning the NATO defence planning process, which again marks us out as unique. In addition, NATO's ability to innovate is what has guaranteed our military superiority over seven decades. Innovation is an essential part of deterrence and defence and needs to be accompanied by investment so that we maintain our technological edge. We also have our scientific advances, not just in our own scientists, but also the convening authority of the Alliance to work with universities, scientists, engineers across our huge region with over one billion people. The organization led by Dr. Brian Wells has more than 6,000 scientists and engineers, 
and works with you to conduct research, technology, experimentation on a wide range of issues for the future. So today, we will review and approve the warfighting capstone concept under the leadership of Supreme Allied Commander Transformation General Andre Lenata, which takes the triad of the military strategy, the concept for the defense of Europe and the Euro-Atlantic region, now with a look further ahead for 20 years. This provides foresight so that we have the necessary requirements and capabilities for the future. And today we will review it in detail before sending advice, our advice, to the Secretary General of the North Atlantic Council. So therefore today we will focus on operations, missions and activities, as well as meeting with our operational partners, many of whom are here in person. We will align our defence and de deterrence concept and look forward to implementation. We will approve the NATO warfighting concept, warfighting capstone concept, and discuss lessons from the COVID crisis. In addition, we continue to work together with our commands to streamline and synchronize all our work, making best use of resources. To do that, we need a strong team, and we have a strong team of leaders. Today, I would particularly like to welcome the new Chiefs of Defense, Admiral Art MacDonald from Canada. Welcome, Art. General Fleming Lenfer from Denmark. Welcome, Fleming. Brindis Kartans Dottir from Iceland. Welcome, Brindis. Steve Thull from Luxembourg, welcome Steve. And to that, say, in closing, 2020 was a challenging year. We did not miss a beat on operations and support to the Alliance. As we look forward, it is absolutely clear that this link with the CHODs and the national military authorities is as vital as it was when we were created as a standing committee in 1949. I look forward to your advice and guidance on all our work and can I now ask our cameras to leave so I can welcome the Secretary General and begin the conference. Thank you.